I think these will work just fine. One of my goals for 2023 was to enjoy activity again. I suffer from chronic pain and sometimes that means I sit on the couch a lot and that pretty much just makes my chronic pain worse. So my goal for this year was to be more active and to enjoy exercising again. And to do that, I was like, I should get some cute exercise clothes. So I started looking online and I found these cute skirts. But a couple days ago when I was looking, they were all sold out in my size. And I thought to myself, you know, I lived through the 2015 athleisure takeover and I definitely had a Fabletics account that I did not monitor very well. So I have a lot of leggings that are oddly similar and and I don't wear hardly any of them anymore. What if I just cut these up and made them into a cute workout skirt? So that's exactly what we're doing today. In this house, we craft in pajamas. I don't want to keep you waiting, so let's get to it. Pretty much every time I try to do a quick project, I always think in my brain, it's gonna be really fast, and then it takes me like a couple of days to do, but not this time. No, this will be a quick project because somewhere deep inside my head, I've convinced myself that if I finish this project before my dryer dings, then I will have won. There's no prize associated with any of this other than the fact that I get two cute workout skirts out of it if everything goes well. First up, I have these black leggings and then this power mesh fabric. That's gonna be one outfit. The other skirt hasn't really been decided yet. I have these three leggings and on camera, I feel like this one's not gonna work color wise. We're looking at the color here. So out of these two, honestly, it doesn't really matter. So maybe I'll just go off of which one fits the most comfortable because I haven't tried either one of these on in like two years, maybe. So here we have option number one, hard to get on. These, and they're a little tight, but maybe that's a good thing, you know, because then they'll stay up. Okay, these ones fit a little bit better. They have a pocket, so that's nice. I don't know. Let's see. We're going with these because I like the fit of these better and they have a pocket. So I'm trying to decide how long I want them. I feel like this is an appropriate length and I need to make sure that they're long enough in the inseam to where like if I'm running, my legs don't rub together because that drives me crazy. I will stop to work out, pick my wedgie and then start running again, but I don't want to have to stop. So like this is the inseam, right? And I want that to be long enough to where my legs, if they rub together, it's not like rubbing my skin, it's rubbing the fabric. So I'm thinking they need to be at least this long. Put a pin in them. And then I'm gonna put a pin back here too to kind of like give me a little bit of an idea of where I should cut. That might not be straight across, but we'll work with it. It's fine, everything is workable. Okay, here we have them. I think these will work just fine. They don't have to be perfect because we will be surging around the like leg holes and it's gonna change the topography of them anyways. So this is fine. I'm gonna cut these leggings pretty much the exact same way that I cut the green ones. Those will do, this will do. Moving on to the next Depth, the serger. I went ahead and surged around the leg holes that I just cut on both pairs of shorty shorts. And then I folded the new hem up and stitched it down with a zigzag stitch. And when I finished with that, it was time to move on to cutting the black power mesh into wide strips. I bought one yard of this black power mesh to use for this project. And I'm not measuring an exact specific length for the wide strips, but more figuring out how to best utilize the amount of fabric that I have so I don't end up wasting any of the material. So now I have this smaller circle of fabric and this bigger circle of fabric, and I'm gonna gather both of them down and then attach them together. And by that, I mean I sewed two of the wide strips together to form like a smaller circle, and then I sewed all the rest of the strips together to form one gigantic circle. Then I sewed a running stitch on both lengths of fabric and gathered the bigger circle of fabric down to fit into the smaller circle. My method for doing this is to pretty much just mark four equally distant points on the big circle and then gather the sections down to four corresponding points on the smaller circle. This process involves a lot 
lot of back and forth on how much fabric I actually need to gather, and because the power mesh is so thin, it makes for a super easy process. I tried to focus on making the gathers as equal and uniform as possible because I don't want one section of the skirt to have noticeably more fabric than another section. Like I don't really want a ton of ruffles in the front and then hardly any in the back. I want it to be the same amount of gathered fabric around the entire skirt. Once everything looked good, I sewed the gathered fabric to the upper part of the skirt, being super mindful to keep the gathers looking neat and uniform. All right, this is what we have. It's pretty long. I got a lot of ruffles in there. All I have left to do is gather up that top portion and then stitch it onto like right here and then these will be done. I'm using the same gathering method for attaching the power mesh skirt to the shorts as I did before, which is pretty much just matching up four points on the skirt to four points on the shorts and then carefully pinning everything down until it looks uniform. And then when I sew the skirt to the shorts, I'm incredibly careful to maintain the space between the gathers and keep them looking as nice as possible. I work really slow and make each stitch as intentional as I can because I don't want it to look messy and like I rushed the entire thing. With the black skirt done, I move on to the green fabric. I decided to make a double circle skirt for the green workout shorts and I do do a little bit of math that there is no way I can explain very well, so I'm just gonna say go on Google and use the circle skirt calculator that you can find there. And that's the best advice I can give when making a circle skirt. I ended up with two panels that I surged together, and then I just pinned the waist part of the skirt to the portion of the shorts that is just under the waistband. And again, I'm using the four corners method of matching everything up. I did cut the waist a little bit smaller than normal because I'm working with stretchy fabric, and I wanted everything to fit snugly and actually stretch around my body a little bit. I sewed the skirt to the shorts right sides together, and then I top stitched the skirt down using color coordinating thread and a double needle. Learning how to thread and use a double needle is a total game changer, so if you haven't done that yet, I highly recommend learning how to do that. It will change your life and make your sewing projects look a little bit more professional. almost forgot the most important visual, the spin. Because like, look at the skirt, what? If nothing else, it does have good like pirouette ability. Okay, this one, this one's not as spinny as the other one is, it's just heavier also. It like static clings to my legs. Four out of 10 for the static cling. Thoughts on this whole thing. This skirt, I think is arguably cuter than the green skirt, but, oh my gosh, my butt cheeks hung out the bottom of it just a little bit because I cut the legs too short. So next time I make this skirt, I will definitely cut the legs a little bit longer so that doesn't happen. I won't apologize for it though because it had to be done for science. I had to know, you had to know. I'm not gonna keep that information from you. If you make a skirt like this, absolutely 100% cut the legs a little bit longer than what you think you're going to need work out in the shorts and then if you want to cut them shorter you always can but I can't add more fabric to these now that it's cut it's done that's it I will still work out in the skirt in private I will probably never wear this one to the gym but next time I make this skirt with the longer leg length, I will definitely wear it to the gym or like a Pilates class or something. I'm trying really, really hard to be more active. I find myself sitting at a computer and sitting at a sewing machine all day long. And so I'm trying to like incorporate more fun activity into my life and it's working. This one, I actually really, really like this one. The legs are a little bit longer and the skirt isn't see-through, so that helps. However, the fabric that I chose for this gets really staticky and it just wants to cling to my legs. And that kind of bothers me when I'm like running or doing jumping jacks. So next time I do a skirt like this, I've got to use some different kind of fabric for the skirt. But other than that, this was really cute. It doesn't spin as well as this pirouette styled one, but still cute. Again, I'm still going to wear this. I feel like a little green ballerina in it. This one makes me feel like the black swan. Now, ideally, I would just buy the blog Lottie's workout skirt from her website, but every time I go, they're either sold out in my size 
or sold out altogether. So I'm just like constantly keeping an eye out for when she restocks them because I really, 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 really want one of the original styled workout skirts. But for now, these will work and I'll probably make a couple more. I wanna make one that's like pink because I'm in my pink era right now. And green, black, and blue are my go-to colors, but I really am trying to incorporate more pink into my wardrobe. So I'm looking for pink fabric, looking for pink leggings, just kind of keeping an eye out. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe. More videos are on their way soon. And in this house, we craft in pajamas. Bye.